My camera was already down to 30% battery, I had less than 11 minutes of record time left on the SSD, and we had just finished the prep section. In this video, I wanna talk about my experience last weekend where I shot a full wedding with the DJI Ronin 4D AK and thought I nearly ruined the entire thing. So let's talk about the setup because I basically broke every rule that a good wedding filmmaker goes by. I had one memory card, two batteries, and worst of all, I was by myself. Let's run through how the day went. When I arrived, one of my favorite parts about using the 4D is the setup. Within 30 seconds, you have the handles attached, and I was already getting my first shots walking into the vent. For this day, I really wanted to test out the new feature on the AK, which is the dynamic range expansion, which pushes it to pretty much 15 stops of usable dynamic range. Although I knew it had a great effect on the rolling shutter, I was confident that the majority of my shots would be slow moving. And I just tried to keep it in mind if I did find a moment where I wanted to do something really fast paced to turn it off, but I don't think I ended up ever turning it off. Even when I was running around with the camera, I checked playback and it doesn't really look like I had any big issues. So that's really good to know because I know it's something that a lot of us were concerned about because the lab tests, that Gerald Undone showed is that it is nearly twice as bad rolling shutter with it on as it is off. But my real world use of these type of shooting environments, it didn't seem to be an issue. Now, usually when I'm using cameras like my Pocket 6K Pro and handheld, I'm always shooting at higher FPS, like 50 or 60. And that way the footage can be slowed down and automatically looks more smooth. However, I knew shooting everything at 8K75 was going to take up precious hard drive space. So for a lot of these shots, I knew they were gonna be smooth. That's kind of the whole point of the 4D. So I just shot at 8K24. Of course, there were moments that called for those higher frame rates or it was just a stylistic choice, but it was just that, a selective choice. When I kept it at 8K24 on a fresh one terabyte card, I only had about 45 minutes of record time. So once I introduced myself to the bridal party, I met up with the photographer. We started doing our thing. We captured all the traditional shots, people getting ready, nice beauty shots of the dress, everyone loading up to the cool trolley that was gonna take us over to the church. That's when I noticed that my battery was under 30% and I had less than 11 minutes of record time left on the card. I knew that definitely wasn't enough to go through the entire ceremony, but thankfully I knew it was just enough to get me through the trolley shots and get me into the church when I knew I'd have about 30 minutes before the start of the ceremony. Once we arrived, I immediately found the corner with the photographers where we could safely put all of our gear and I created a makeshift DIT station and I pulled out my MacBook Pro and battery bank where I immediately plugged in the dying battery put a fresh one on the camera, and I began transferring all the footage to a Samsung T9 four terabyte card, thankfully provided by Samsung. Huge shout out to them for sending the card out, and thankfully to this incredible reads and write speeds of this card, it only took about 10-ish minutes to transfer around 700 to 800 gigs of footage. I was very happy when I saw that number because it meant that I would have time to then back up the same footage to a T7 Shield 4 terabyte that I had on hand because you always want redundant copies, especially with weddings, there's no debate there. And since I knew I was going to have to reformat the card to obviously keep shooting throughout the day, I knew I needed to back up. While everything was backing up and the batteries were charging, I used this time to run around and find the priest and the groom, mic them up with the brand new Rode Wireless Pros. Again, huge shout out to Rode for providing that. As someone who's coming from the original Rode uh, lavalier kit, this is a huge upgrade. Having 32-bit float recording on device allowed me to not even worry about cutouts or camera issues or distance issues from the receiver to the transmitter. By the time the ceremony began, I was back fully loaded with a fresh one terabyte card, fresh battery on the Ronin 4D, and I started capturing the ceremony. At some point, I even switched from the 17 to 28, and I threw on my Irix 45. Now with these heavier cine lenses, I basically lose access to the gimbal, but honestly, to me, it just kind of feels like an FX9, FX6, somewhere like that. I enjoy hand-holding this camera as well. It's big and it's heavier than a mirrorless camera, but honestly, that helps give a very pleasing handheld look to it, rather than just total shakiness of a lightweight camera. 
Once the ceremony was complete, we rushed outside to capture their exit shot where they had confetti thrown. And for this shot, I threw on the 4K no crop 120 FPS. And honestly, this was probably my favorite shot of the entire day. It just looked incredible. The dynamic range was great. Obviously, we got lucky with lighting and weather. Had nice overcast, very diffused lighting. And just gives infinite possibilities with look and style and the color grading, which is all I ever want. On some cameras, when you go to those higher frame rate options, it really feels like there's a quality drop because of the resolution or bit rate differences. But with here, it seamlessly matches to the other 8K clips. And for me, that's really important because it makes me not second guess going to those higher frame rate options for those selected clips because I feel like it's gonna match in the project really well. Now, thankfully after this, I knew that the couple was gonna kind of do a little round trip on the trolley come around back inside the church. And this is when all of those like formal family photos happen. And I don't really need to capture a lot of video during that time. So I use this to again, transfer all the footage from the ceremony, get it backed up on both separate hard drives as well as charge a battery. And so during this hour, because the batteries on this camera charge so fast, I was able to hop on the trolley back to the venue where the reception was gonna take place with a fresh one terabyte card again and two fresh batteries ready to go. So now we're back at Jeffrey's mansion here in Bexley, Ohio, and we're capturing a variety of shots of the whole bridal party and everyone just having a good time, freshly married, everyone's happy. And I just truly love how this camera seems to work in pretty much every situation I throw it in. Sometimes being able to flick on autofocus and active track so I can get more complex shots while moving the physical camera or going full manual on everything. I find that holding this all day it was like the first time shooting a wedding that I didn't come home with a completely broken back. It definitely felt a lot better than when I shoot with a really tall setup, like a pocket camera on a taller gimbal. After this section of shooting, it was cocktail hour time and they wanted this mostly to be private. So it was like another great opportunity to run down to my little makeshift DIT section, get everything backed up yet again and get my battery refreshed. Going into the reception, they only wanted us to stay for toasts and first dances. So I knew this was gonna be a breeze in terms of data and battery. Although I will say the hard drives at this point were almost at three terabytes being taken up. So it was starting to cut it close in terms of overall capacity. During the toast, I did get slightly nervous only because some of the speeches ran for a little over 10 minutes, which ended up being around 250 gigs for a single clip. Filming on the Ronin 4D 8K with a single card and just a couple batteries honestly put me in the mentality that a lot of people have when they shoot film. Unlike when you have a mirrorless camera shooting H.265 and a terabyte memory card where you can just shoot for hours and hours and hours all day without ever worrying about filling it up, here I was very intentional with each shot that I got. And while a lot of people may not like that style of shooting or having to even worry about it, I actually really liked it. I think it got me better shots and it makes the post-production workflow even easier because I don't have a ton of useless shots that I just got because I was like, well, maybe I'll use this. Maybe I need 10 shots of me panning around this cake. No, I need a couple various angles of this and that and it just turned out great. And I do want to say that I'm actually not editing the final wedding film. I'm sending it off to the company that hired me. So I transcoded all of these clips to 4K because they definitely don't want four terabytes of 8K raw footage. And by the time I transcoded everything into a 4K ProRes LT file that is still very gradable and a good file size, it ended up being around 380 gigs for everything out the door, which I think is a very fair uh, amount of file sizes for a full wedding day. Oh, and by the way, of course I brought my Pocket 6K Pro as a B cam and backup. I wasn't actually going to potentially ruin someone's wedding by having a camera that was filled up, dead of batteries, or just not ready to handle the situation. But I can confidently say that I didn't need the Pocket at all. 
Now, if I was a full-time wedding filmmaker or you're looking for a recommendation, I definitely recommend picking up at least a couple memory cards and a handful of batteries so that you can be comfortable and make sure you have a shooting partner so that one of you can be shooting while the other one's backing up or dealing with data. But this worst case scenario is proof that you can shoot a successful wedding with the 4D 8K and walk away with some truly incredible footage. Let me know what you think about the final footage and this overall experience down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video.